Next on Special Report, President Bush makes his fifth visit to the region devastated by Hurricane Katrina and says he sees more progress every time he's there. Meanwhile, Hurricane Rita is gaining strength. We'll show you how Florida is handling that storm. The top Democrat in the Senate says he'll vote against John Roberts as the next Chief Justice. And North Korea makes new demands just one day after agreeing to scrap its nuclear weapons program. First, though, the other headlines from the Fox desk in New York. I'm Lori Dew. Hurricane Rita is now about 50 miles past Key West, but is gaining steam. Forecasters expect this now Category 2 storm to become a major Cat 4 in the next 24 hours. Right now, she's packing winds of at least 100 miles per hour and is heading toward the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Brit has more coming up. The July 7th London bombers did recon nearly two weeks before the attacks. Some newly released closed-circuit footage shows three of the four bombers casing the subway. Investigators tracked down the bombers' tickets and receipts, then used them to find these images on the tape. 56 people, including the bombers, died in those attacks. The Pentagon will pay Uzbekistan $23 million for use of an air base there, even though U.S. troops are being evicted. In July, Uzbekistan said it wanted U.S. use of its base terminated after Washington criticized its government for violently suppressing opposition demonstrators. The latest payment is for past use of the facility. And the Senate voted today to keep its ban on Japanese beef because Japan won't lift its ban on ours. Once the biggest consumer of American beef, Japan banned U.S. imports after mad cow disease showed up here in 2003. Last fall, Japan agreed to lift the ban, but hasn't done so thus far. Special Report with Brit starts right now. Welcome to Washington. I'm Britt Hume. As the ninth hurricane of the season, Hurricane Rita, blew toward the Gulf of Mexico, President Bush made his fifth trip to the Gulf Coast since Hurricane Katrina to see for himself the progress of the recovery. Fox News White House correspondent Wendell Golder reports. President Bush tracked the progress of Hurricane Rita from the USS Iwo Jima, docked next to the New Orleans Convention Center. With him was Mayor Ray Nagin, convinced to stop letting people return to the city the day before by White House appeals and what weather forecasters said today was a one in four chance Rita will follow Katrina's path. Later at a Folgers coffee plant that resumed operation Friday, Mr. Bush prayed lightning doesn't strike twice, but said he's taking no chances. All up and down this coastline, people are now preparing for what is anticipated to be yet another significant storm. The president aimed to show progress is being made in the region's recovery. He shook hands with workers in front of trailers the company brought in for them to live in since many of their own homes were flooded. Earlier in Gulfport, Mississippi, Mr. Bush was warmly received. Tell me we still love you. And his message was the same as that in New Orleans. Every time I come back here, I see progress. But he acknowledged the slow pace of the cleanup was frustrating local officials and leaving the region vulnerable to another storm. The president said he was trying to clear away government regulations. We're trying to help get this recovery going by by plowing through the paperwork requirements as fast as possible so that we can reduce the frustrations here. As the day began, the White House announced Homeland Security Director Fran Townsend will oversee an investigation into what went right and what went wrong in the response to Katrina. An AP Ipsos poll suggests continued public dissatisfaction. 51% disapprove of the president's handling of the storm. The number's almost unchanged from early September. And his job approval rating remains close to its lowest level, 40% the slight improvement within the statistical margin of error. Uh, Treasury Secretary John Snow today said what the, the White House agenda. has been afraid to. And, Katrina has uh, overtaken the president's for, legislative for agenda. I think it will push to the, to the back burner some issues that otherwise would have been, uh, been on, on the agenda now. This weekend, Mr. Bush will make a sixth Katrina-related trip to talk to evacuees being housed in three states. His schedule could put him in the region just as Rita hits. The president's aides say spreading Katrina victims out all over the country has hurt him. 
Not only do people see the heartbreak in New Orleans and coastal Mississippi on the national news, but their local TV stations and newspapers talk to evacuees who feel FEMA and the federal government should be more responsive. And the blame for that often winds up right here. Britt? Wendell, thank you. Fox News correspondent Phil Keating has been posted in New Orleans tracking the progress of recovery there. And tonight he has another update. Phil? Britt, the state of Louisiana is again in a state of emergency and residents of the city of New Orleans are again evacuating. It's hard to believe, but the city and state now dealing with two hurricanes, repairing and rebuilding from Hurricane Katrina, while at the same time preparing for the potential of oncoming Hurricane Rita. About an hour ago, after briefing the president on board the USS Iwo Jima, the mayor of New Orleans, the governor of Louisiana, Homeland Security's vice admiral in charge, and the man in charge of the military presence down here, General Honoré, all addressed the public with all seriousness. Because as difficult as it is to swallow this still extremely vulnerable city, could be devastated all over again by Hurricane Rita. It can happen. It can move in any direction based on the, uh, the wind. And so that concerns us. So I have put the state on alert. We've already declared another emergency for, particularly at this moment, for southwest Louisiana. Let me talk to the residents of New Orleans for a minute. I know it's been three weeks plus that you haven't been able to come back into your city. And I know there are lots of people who are very anxious about coming home. And I know some of you were prepared to come back to New Orleans. You know, just hold on for a little longer. So what this all means in areas like the French Quarter, where business owners had been allowed to return over the weekend, well, now they're boarding back up and preparing to leave town again. The mayor says two bus loads of West Bank residents who had just returned to their homes yesterday, they voluntarily evacuated today. And at the convention center, which, of course, became notorious in that week after Katrina, while well, people are again uh, gathering outside the convention center to get on buses to take them out to shelters. And more people may prepare to evacuate as Rita's path gets closer. We'll see about that. Now, on a lighter note, after that weekend, nationally televised weekend of disagreeing opinions between the mayor on one side and Homeland Security, Stat Allen on the other, well, I was all over the population plan, which of course was suspended yesterday. The mayor presented the vice admiral with a little present today, symbolizing that perhaps the past can be the past. As if this is one leadership team, we may not always agree, but we have one mission, and that is to bring New Orleans back. And I have a little gift for my good friend, Admiral Allen. I have a wonderful t-shirt for him. It's called, I Love New Orleans. And I want to give him that as my Thank gift. You. Also, as of this afternoon, all of the New Orleans residents who had been bused to the Astrodome in Houston, they are now out of the Astrodome. They were flown today up to Arkansas, the Astrodome now not being used as an evacuation center. Back to you, Britt. Okay, Phil, thank you. While survivors of Hurricane Katrina struggle to rebuild their lives, politicians in Washington are trying to figure out how best to pay for long-term recovery in that storm-damaged region and perhaps make some political gains at the same time. Fox News congressional correspondent Brian Wilson has that story. So far, Congress has approved $62 billion for rescue recovery and rebuilding along the Gulf Coast. And today, congressional leaders were advised that $15 billion has already been spent. No one knows for sure, but it seems likely that the total federal tab will run at least $150 billion, probably higher. Where will the money come from? House Majority Leader Tom DeLay says tax increases are not the answer because tax hikes will not help Gulf Coast residents rebuild and find jobs. Raising taxes will not help create any of those things, but will instead guarantee that the region's economic trouble spread to the rest of the, of the country. We cannot allow that, and the president ha has already said he won't. That statement comes as Democrats argue for repeal of some of the tax cuts already approved by Congress and for reconsideration of past budget decisions. This is not the time for tax cuts for the rich. It's not the tax time for cutting Medicaid. It's not the time for cutting student aid. The Republican leader of the Senate said today there is a Republican desire to limit placing a Katrina deficit on future generations. So he is calling on elected officials to dig deep and identify areas where fat can be trimmed. In the future, we're going to look at a lot of the issues that uh, have been discussed, the offsets. 
potential across the, the, the board spending cuts. Looking at legislation we passed uh, uh, in recent weeks, months, and, and even years as to where we can appropriately cut. There is ample evidence that Democrats see Katrina as a watershed event and a wonderful political opportunity. Senator John Kerry, speaking last night at Brown University, attacked the Bush administration for what he sees as a lackluster response to Hurricane Katrina, but then turned to make a larger political point. Brownie is to Katrina what Paul Bremer is to peace in Iraq, what George Tennant is to slam dunk intelligence, what Paul Wolfowitz is to parades paved with flowers in Baghdad. The bottom line is simple. The will do whatever it takes administration doesn't have what it takes to get the job done. This is the Katrina administration. On another front, Senator Bill Frisch seems to have walked away from the idea of a special bipartisan bicameral committee to investigate what went wrong following Katrina. It now appears that both sides of the Hill will conduct separate investigations in the appropriate committees. Britt? Brian, thank you. In post-hurricane economic news, OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, has agreed to make available two million extra barrels of oil a day. That increased supply will be offered for three months beginning October 1st. In the meantime, in Washington, the Federal Reserve raised a key interest rate another quarter point. Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan said the economic impact of Hurricane Katrina is likely to be temporary, suggesting the possibility of yet further rate heights in the future. Next on Special Report, we'll have Florida Keys on Hurricane Katrina and more later. Stay tuned. Special Report with Brit Hume is brought to you by Pacific Life, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. You've worked hard over the years creating a good life for yourself and for your family. At Pacific Life, we understand the importance of building a legacy that will stand the test of time. For over 135 years, Pacific Life has provided millions of Americans with the power of choice. A wide array of solutions to help them meet their financial and estate planning goals. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. I do a lot of testing for my diabetes. And sure, there's pain, but you deal with it. These days, I'm dealing better. I switched to Freestyle Flash, and it's virtually pain-free. Virtually pain-free. Freestyle Flash uses the smallest sample of blood, 50 to 90% less than most meters. And Freestyle Flash is the world's smallest meter. If you have diabetes, you owe it to yourself to check out Freestyle Flash. It's virtually pain-free. The Oracle Grid, a group of low-cost servers connected by Oracle software. Now, if a server fails, the grid just keeps running. The Oracle Grid runs faster, costs less, and never breaks. Have you seen Quiznos new Cabo chicken sub with deli sliced chicken, bacon, and cheddar all topped with a mild chipotle mayo and fresh guacamole? Hubba hubba. That thing's a looker. Quiznos new Cabo chicken sub, just $2.99. Wow, just $2.99? Hurricane Rita today whipped across the Florida Keys, intensifying as it went. Fox News correspondent Rick Leventhal has been standing up against the wind and the water for most of the day in Marathon, Florida, and has the latest developments. Rick? And, Britt, the weather's been going from pretty good to pretty bad throughout this day, and it's back to pretty bad right about now with the rain starting to come in again, the wind's picking up. Uh, you can see here white caps out in the Atlantic, and uh, 
And one of the victims of this storm, this boat right here, which is underwater, and uh, pieces of this dock also missing in front of us. Uh, Marathon has seen some flooding today as well. A lot of streets in the area underwater. Some homes being encroached at this point. Uh, but a lot of people did get out of town when they were told. Uh, certainly, uh, this state is as used to hurricanes as any, any state in the, in the country. And Governor Jeb Bush uh, went out of his way to try and make sure that people did get out of town, ordering a mandatory evacuation. He cleared out the three hospitals in Monroe County here in the Florida Keys and also two nursing homes. Got all those people out before Rita came in. Uh, he also has hundreds of trucks standing by with water and ice. And he has National Guard troops mobilized at three staging areas, uh, including Homestead and West Palm Beach and Miami, ready to move in when it's safe to do so. In fact, Governor Jeb Bush coming here to Monroe County to Marathon Key tomorrow to survey what damages they have suffered here. Uh, again, he did order everyone to get out, but not everyone listened. So earlier today, he gave people another piece of advice. Here's that. If you've not left the Keys already, uh, stay where you are. This is now not the time to evacuate. Many people did do that yesterday, for which we're grateful. But today is the time. Uh, to, today is now is the time to hunker down. Uh, what we say around here is, turn around, don't drown. Well, there are people with uh, special needs who are now in a shelter. In fact, 1,300 others uh, who did evacuate are now in shelters uh, up in Broward and, and Dade counties. Uh, but, if, you know, Britt, the, the storm could have been a lot worse. Certainly, uh, the Keys have dodged a lot of bullets, uh, and this time they seem to have done better uh, than they had feared. So, uh, so things are looking up. But US-1 uh, is closed. There are stretches of US-1 that remain underwater, a lot of debris on the roads and spots, and people are being encouraged to stay off the roads uh, until it's been determined that it's safe to head back out again. Britt. Rick Leventhal in Marathon Key, Florida. Thanks very much. Two top Senate Democrats today revealed how they will vote on the confirmation of Chief Justice nominee John Roberts. In a not unexpected development, both Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy and Senate Democratic Leader Harry Reid say they will vote no. Fox News Chief Washington correspondent Jim Angle is standing by with the details. Jim? Hello, Brett. Well, the Democratic leader in the Senate had plenty of compliments for John Roberts, but still said he could not vote for his confirmation. John Roberts is an excellent lawyer and a very affable person. But the end of this process, I frankly have too many unanswered questions about the nominee to justify a vote confirming him. Senator Reid complained, as did Democrats in the hearings, that they had no access to documents from Roberts' days at the Solicitor General's office in the early 90s, which the administration argued were covered by attorney-client privilege. Senators did have some 75,000 pages of other documents to go on, as well as his record on the appeals court, which Senator Reid conceded today was one of moderation. Let me say that by observing that John Roberts has been a thoughtful, mainstream judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, he's appropriate. But he's only been a member of that court for two years and has not confronted many cutting-edge constitutional issues. Make it hard to determine, he said, what kind of Supreme Court justice he would be. Senator Reid's main objection came from the memos Roberts wrote on civil rights during the Reagan administration, and Reid concluded the worst from them. It's now clear that as a young lawyer, John Roberts played a significant role in shaping and advancing the Republican agenda to roll back civil rights protections. Met with Georgia Republican Saxby Chambliss today and explained to senators the Reagan administration was against quotas, not affirmative action, a key distinction, he said, for President Reagan. After their meeting, Senator Chambliss said Roberts deserves to be confirmed. If integrity counts, if honesty counts, if knowledge of the law counts, if family values count, if being a true American count, then um, you can't vote against this man. Senator Reid said his decision to vote against Roberts was a very close call, so he did not urge other Democrats to vote one way or the other, and made clear there is no cause for a filibuster. In fact, Reid said John Roberts may well prove to be a fine Supreme Court justice, later telling rep reporters there's no doubt he will be confirmed, and predicting he'll get plenty of votes. So this was perhaps the most complimentary and encouraging no vote anyone could get. Britt. Jim, thank you. 
Next on Special Report, Iraqi and U.S. forces flush terrorists from Tal Afar as attacks continue elsewhere in the country. We'll have that report when we come back. more to see. Shouldn't you be watching it on the Aquas Liquid Crystal Television from Sharp? As team mom, my mom always watches what we eat and encourages us to eat our Campbell's Chunky Soup. Like chunky chicken noodle. Eat up those big chunks of chicken. She's also very encouraging from the sidelines. Chunky chicken noodle, it fills you up right. Trust, it's everything. Nobody hands out trust. Talent is one thing. Combine talent with people you trust, and you will walk on that court with a level of respect no one can match. Ask your financial advisor about the Hartford Mutual Funds, offered by the Hartford, a company built on 194 years of trust. Request a complete prospectus with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing or sending money. Tylenol Rapid Release Gels. Gel caps with specially designed holes to release powerful medicine even faster than before. The Oracle Grid. A group of low-cost servers connected by Oracle software. Now, if a server fails... The grid just keeps running. The Oracle grid runs faster, costs less, and never breaks. Can you tell the difference? At Beaches Ultra Inclusive Family Resorts, everything you dream about magically comes true. Gliding and sliding and splashing with glee. Diving and dining, it's all included, you see. Even Elmo and friends from Sesame Street. Beaches make every day in paradise perfect. Now on sale up to 50% off. Call your travel agent or 1-800-BEACHES. Ah, moving day. Ain't it swell? But if you're the Gilmore family, you actually love it. You see, with Dish Mover, all Dad had to do was pack his receiver and remote and let Dish Network do the rest. Dish Mover makes it easy. Leave your old Dish antenna behind and start enjoying Dish Network in your new home. Just give us a call or visit your local retailer to schedule a professional installation. If only life was as dandy as the Gilmore's. Well, with Dish Mover, at least moving can be. Top Pentagon brass said today that an ongoing operation to clear out terrorists holed up in the northwestern Iraqi city of Tal Afar has yielded some positive results. But elsewhere in the country, American soldiers and civilians were among the victims of terrorist attacks again. Fox News Pentagon correspondent Brett Baer reports. A crater is all that remains of a suicide bombing in Mosul that killed four American contractors a diplomatic security agent and three security guards. U.S. commanders also announced today that five soldiers were killed in three separate bombings since Monday. At the Pentagon, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs insisted that despite the spike in violence, there are clear signs Iraqi forces are stepping forward in the fight. Iraqi forces have 126 battalions in the fight. Last year, at this time, there were five. More than 20 operational bases have been turned over to Iraqi control. And Iraqi forces now maintain order in the once violent city of Najaf and most of Baghdad. General Myers said the operation near the border city of Talafar is continuing with tangible results. More than 600 anti-Iraqi forces have been captured or killed since this operation began on September 10th. A small uprising against British forces in Basra Monday led to this scene. A British tank and British soldiers under attack by crowds throwing Molotov cocktails and rocks. 
This after two British commandos were arrested for allegedly shooting two Iraqi policemen. Witnesses say a British tank smashed through the wall of an Iraqi jail to try to free the two British soldiers. They were not inside, but were later rescued from a house nearby. Iraqi officials called the British moves, quote, very unfortunate. The British defense minister defended the action as absolutely right since the soldiers were being held illegally. Today, Secretary Rumsfeld avoided commenting. I haven't had a chance to study the, the details of, of what took place, and uh, that's up to the Brits. That's their sector. Rumsfeld did say, however, that recent tensions in Basra could be tied directly to infiltration by Iran. You can be sure that the playing field's not even there. They're interested, they're involved, and they're active, and it's not helpful. As vote counting started today in Afghanistan after Sunday's historic parliamentary elections, Secretary Rumsfeld criticized the lack of news coverage of the event. Meanwhile, in a statement that seemed to catch the Pentagon off guard, Afghan President Hamid Karzai today challenged the need for major military operations, airstrikes, or unauthorized residential searches, prompting this response from Rumsfeld. Do we coordinate closely with the Afghan uh, security forces and with the Afghan governments in terms of the counterterrorism activities? You bet. When you don't have a massed army on the ground or large puddles of, of enemies, uh, then airstrikes are less, uh, less effective than when you do have that type of a situation. That, that's absolutely correct. As for the election, Rumsfeld recalled how four years ago many in the press raised serious questions about the Afghan war, with some calling it a quagmire, and he wondered aloud why so little coverage is being given to what is obviously a success today. Brett. Thank you, Brett. The Nazi hunter Simon Wiesenthal has died in his sleep at his home in Vienna, Austria. He was 96. He survived five Nazi death camps and devoted the rest of his life to finding some 1,100 former Nazis, including Adolf Eichmann and the police officer who arrested Anne Frank. But Wiesenthal did not blame the German nation for the Holocaust. Individuals, he said, are accountable for their actions. They should know that they will one day pay for it. Simon Wiesenthal will be memorialized in Vienna tomorrow. He will be buried in Israel. We have to take a break to hear from our sponsors and to update the other headlines, but when we come back, Fidel Castro joins the post-hurricane blame game. That story next on The Grapevine. Most people want to get in better shape, but they just don't have the time. Well, Stacy, what if I told you in just three 20-minute workouts, only one hour a week, you can increase your energy levels, strengthen your heart, reduce your stress, and shape all the muscles of your body, all with one quality machine. Would you be interested? Yes, I would. Well, Stacy, I have good news. Tell me more. I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. Yeah, baby, you can do it. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. How many days is spring break? 21. What will we miss your room? A little bit. What will we miss Rocky? You know what I'm going to miss the most? What? This face. Mr. Bucket, welcome to Residence Inn. No Residence Inn. All sweets with all the comforts. Last year, Norfolk Southern and its shipping partners took hundreds of thousands of freight loads off the highway. In fact, they've invested millions to convert even more traffic in the coming years. So it's easy to see how the economy won't be the only thing that benefits. Norfolk Southern, the future of transportation. The natural condition of our eyes is moist. But sometimes, your eyes don't produce enough tears. If you use over-the-counter eye drops or artificial tears several times a day, ask your eye doctor about restasis. Because you may have chronic dry eye due to decreased tear production. You can have chronic dry eye without knowing it, like me. And my doctor prescribed restasis. It's the only eye drop that helps your eyes increase tear production with continued use. Go to Restasis5.com or call 1-866-379-3935 to get this free information kit. Restasis helps increase your natural ability to produce tears. 
which may be suppressed by inflammation due to chronic dry eye. It should not be used by patients with active eye infections and has not been studied in patients with a history of herpes viral infections of the eye. The most common side effect is a burning sensation. One drop twice a day with continued use helps me make more of my own tears. My tears. Thanks, Restasis. Make an appointment with your eye doctor to see if Restasis is right for you. The special report continues in a moment, but first let's update today's other headlines and get a preview of tonight's Fox report from Shepard Smith in our New York newsroom. Shep? Britt, a grim milestone in Iraq. Five more U.S. service members have been killed there, pushing the total number of American military deaths in Iraq past 1900. And a suicide car bombing attack in the U.S. diplomatic convoy in Mosul, killing four U.S. citizens who were working in Iraq as security guards. Prosecutors say a man accused of conspiring to assassinate President Bush admits he thought up the idea. The details coming out in a newly released government motion, but it says that the plot was never pursued because other members of Ahmed Abu Ali's Al-Qaeda cell didn't follow through. Abu Ali has pleaded not guilty. He's scheduled to go on trial next month. Well, a major drug manufacturer is forking out more than 150 million bucks to settle allegations of fraud. The feds accused GlaxoSmithKline of inflating the price of two of its anti-nausea drugs for Medicare and Medicaid programs. The company admitted to no wrongdoing in the settlement. Stocks dip as the Fed raises short-term interest rates. The Dow off 76, NASDAQ minus 13, S&P off 9. Tonight on the Fox Report, Hurricane Rita. It's big and growing and setting its sights. It's now believed on the state of Texas. How bad a one-two punch will this be? It's our focus on the Fox Report, next. And now the most intriguing two minutes in television, the latest from the political grapevine. Cuban President Fidel Castro says it's the U.S. government's fault that so many people died in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina insisting victims could have been saved if the U.S. had accepted his offer to send 1,600 Cuban doctors to the Gulf region. Castro, speaking in Havana yesterday, said, quote, It hurts to think about it. Perhaps some of those desperate people situated in the water and on the verge of dying could have lived. He added, quote, That's a hard lesson for those whose false pride and erroneous concepts have driven them not to respond even late to our offer. Bush administration officials, by the way, have called the response from U.S. medical services, quote, robust. No sooner had President Bush finished his address from New Orleans last Thursday than Massachusetts Democratic Senator John Kerry issued a statement saying, quote, Americans want an end to politics as usual that leaves them dangerously, unforgivably unprepared, not speeches in the aftermath to explain away the inexcusable. But while the president was giving his address, Kerry was having dinner at the fashionable Cafe Milano restaurant in Georgetown. Witnesses tell the Washington Times that Kerry sat with his back to the TV at the bar and never turned around. What's more, he was still eating at the time his statement was sent out in his name. In a Sunday editorial calling for the Senate to reject Supreme Court Justice nominee John Roberts, the New York Times said Roberts was, quote, too much of a mystery to be approved since he wouldn't answer questions about his personal views and potential future rulings. But 12 years ago, when the nominee, then Ruth Bader Ginsburg, refused to answer dozens of questions, the Times fully endorsed her approval saying quote she showed the patience and courtesy befitting a justice of the highest court while the politicians repeatedly pressed for bottom lines on particular issues like the death penalty and gay rights Ms. Ginsburg asked to be judged as a judge not as an advocate Burger King has recalled its ice cream cone desserts from British restaurants after a Muslim man in Park Royal England complained that the treats were offensive and quote sacrilegious Specifically, the man insisted that the design on the lid of the dessert resembled the Arabic word for God or Allah. He threatened to launch a, quote, jihad if the lid was not changed. Burger King, quoted by the Scotsman newspaper, says, quote, the design simply represents a spinning ice cream cone. Still, it is apologized and is now spending thousands of dollars to redesign the lid. Less than a day after the five nations negotiating with North Korea announced they had signed a document with the Pyongyang government designed to lead to the end of its nuclear weapons program, then the tables were turned. The land sometimes known as the Hermit Kingdom has now made a new demand for nuclear reactors. Fox News correspondent James Rosen reports. 
As North Korea's top nuclear negotiator left Beijing for Pyongyang, smiling for photographers, his colleagues back home were already issuing statements saying the U.S. should, quote, not even dream of asking the North to dismantle its nuclear weapons before it gets a light water civilian nuclear reactor. In New York, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice reminded the North Monday's agreement contained no such deal, only a promise by the U.S. and the other four parties to the talks to discuss a light water reactor at an appropriate time. I think that we will not get hung up on um, this statement. We will uh, stick to the text of the Beijing um, statement, and um, I believe that we can make progress if... Uh, everybody sticks to what was actually agreed to. In Monday's agreement, the North claimed a right to peaceful nuclear activity, but a State Department spokesman argued the North is now distorting the agreement and claimed Russia, China, Japan, and South Korea agree. In their final statements, they're very clear and explicit about the sequencing here. And, and like us, uh, leave no room for ambiguity that uh, an appropriate time means after uh, dismantlement and verification. One man who doubts the other country's commitment is Henry Sokolsky, a deputy undersecretary of defense under the first President Bush and author of a new history of weapons proliferation and an earlier study on Korean arms talks. Sokolsky says that by agreeing even to contemplate civilian nuclear programs for the North, the current administration put its desire to prove the value of the six-party talks ahead of its judgment. Uh, to some extent, they've undermined the credibility of being tough with other violators of the nuclear rules like, North, uh, like Iran. I think there's been an allergy to thinking big with regard to the rules. We like rules to apply slightly differently in the case of Iran, India, and North Korea. I don't think that's tenable. There may be good reason to question the solidarity of Washington's allies in the six-party talks. South Korea said it wants to bridge the differences between the U.S. and the North, while Russia promptly offered to build a nuclear civilian reactor in North Korea. At the State Department, James Rosen, Fox News. The city of New London, Connecticut may have won the Supreme Court battle over its right to seize private property for another private use, which the city deemed in its best interest and in the best interest of the community. But as Fox News correspondent Major Garrett reports, the political war continued today when homeowner Suzette Kilo testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Ms. Kilo came to Washington and was in no mood to compromise. This battle against eminent domain abuse may have started as a way for me to save my little pink cottage, but has rightly grown into something much larger, the fight to restore the American dream and the sacredity and security of, of each and one of our homes. Five years ago, Suzette Kilo sued New London, Connecticut for condemning her home to make way for a 90-acre redevelopment project adjacent to a Pfizer research facility. The city used eminent domain, arguing creating new jobs and tax revenue gave it the power to seize Kilo's property. In June, the Supreme Court sided with the city, touching off bipartisan outrage. If there's anything that I think should take high priority in America, it is the protection of private property. This is something every American and certainly every member of Congress can identify with. The mayor of New London dismissed the criticism. Hemming the domain is a powerful economic development tool that helps cities create jobs, grow businesses, and most importantly, strengthen neighborhoods. Other witnesses disagreed, saying eminent domain created victims long before the Kilo case, most of them poor blacks. The displacement of African Americans and urban renewal projects are so intertwined that urban renewal was often referred to as black removal. New London offered to buy Kilo's home. She said principal meant more than price. And uh, this isn't about compensation, this is about property rights and people being able to keep their own, and keep their own uh, homes. And there's a Katrina angle in all of this too. Some lawmakers said today they want to make sure that the billions Washington is sending to governments in the Gulf Coast aren't used through eminent domain procedures to gobble up damaged private property, all in the name of economic revival. In Washington, Major Garrett, Fox News. Next on Special Report, how much money should the federal government spend on hurricane recovery for how long and where will it come from? We'll talk about that with the Fox All-Stars when we come back.
There's an even better way to care for your nest egg. Objective Financial Advice. A.G. Edwards. For 118 years, fully invested in our clients. The Oracle Grid. A group of low-cost servers connected by Oracle software. Now, if a server fails, the grid just keeps running. The Oracle Grid runs faster, costs less, and never breaks. They say time is money, and we say you're wasting both if you don't rent from National Car Rental. When you join National's Emerald Club, you get to bypass the counter, go straight to the lot, and choose your own car. And the more you rent, the faster you earn upgrades. We've also streamlined the return process, so you just drop off your car and go. Now with our one-two free promotion, with two qualifying rentals, you get one day free. Go to nationalcar.com to register. National Car Rental, faster than the speed of life. File not found. Virus detected. Can't connect. Finally, your suffering is over. Introducing Geek Squad, 24-hour computer support task force. Call 1-800-GEEK-SQUAD. Help has arrived. Exclusively from Sharper Image, the Ionic Breeze Silent Air Purifier with Ozone Guard. It not only captures pollen, dust, and dander, it can actually convert smog and ozone into oxygen with no fans, no filters, silently. The Ionic Breeze charges incoming air and contaminants attached to the collection grid. Then the air passes through the new Ozone Guard grill with Premier Catalyst coating that instantly converts a significant portion of smog and ozone into pure oxygen. America's most trusted brand of air purifier, the Ionic Breeze is the only air purifier that's earned seals from both the British Allergy Foundation and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America because it's been proven to reduce airborne allergens. Order now and get a free $69 bathroom Ionic Breeze to help keep your bathroom fresh and clean. A free five-year warranty. And you'll even get free shipping. Call 1-800-881-4133. That's 1-800-881-4133. How can one company help create stronger, lighter, safer, quieter vehicles, and support research into new energy sources to run them by using the right chemistry. Improving the things we all need is a great journey. And it's ours. Dow. Living. Improved daily. We're always live. Anticipated we will spend somewhere close to $200 billion with respect to Katrina and the natural disaster, the devastating disaster. And the question is, what do we do to pay for that? Well, by sunlight, Senator Dorgan is a piker. Some people are saying it'll be $300 billion and possibly more. Some analytical observations on this question now from Jeff Birnbaum, Washington Post columnist, Mara Lassen, national political correspondent of National Public Radio. And the syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer, Fox News contributors all. Well, we hear these numbers, and they're thrown around with considerable certainty and authority. $200 billion seems to be sort of the low end of the estimate range, rising to $300 billion. Questions about this are, first of all, does anybody have any idea over how long a period of time these numbers are being um, uh, talked about? Uh, and in other words, how long will it take to spend these sums? And it, you know, sort of what rate of payout, and and uh, and and so on, and how to finance it, Jeff. Well, we we don't know the answer to these questions, Britt. We we do know that the federal government is more or less obliged to pay for most of the reconstruction under the Stafford Act, which is uh, something that was passed uh, dealing with emergencies this like this. This is the bill. This is the Nin law that created what we now know as FEMA. That's right. And this provided that the federal government would pay for. Uh, uh, the vast bulk of the reconstruction of infrastructure in disaster-laden areas. So that doesn't pay for people's houses? No, not, right. not, not like and that. And it doesn't compensate people who didn't have flood insurance? Right. Uh, no, it, it, the flood insurance is a separate issue entirely. But in any is. case, the federal government is obliged to pay for uh, the uh, reconstruction of highways and uh, probably the ports and a lot of the structure that's down there. Uh, and we don't know how much it costs. We do know that the $200 billion is an amount 
that uh, not coincidentally is the same amount that was uh, spent so far on the Iraq war, and that's why that number is, is being bandied about so, so often, I think. So it's, a, so it's sort of a politically it's, charged number. It's a politically charged number. What we hear from uh, the White House is it probably won't cost the U.S. government that much, and whatever the amount that is paid out will be paid out over a number of years because it takes a long time well, Mark, to, to do this. Yeah, we're we what kind don't. of numbers, are, I mean, just estimating it off of, just to try to make a sort of a, a, mm -hmm. a horseback estimate here of how long it'll take to do. I mean, it seems like we're likely to be at work down there as a I nation for, for a long, for, what, for a very decade long maybe? Time. For, I think possibly for a very long time. Look, the other day the president famously said it's going to cost whatever it costs. And I think the, the question that, um, it's interesting, no one is saying let's not spend the money. Um, what uh, fiscal hawks like Dorgan on the Democratic side are saying is the same thing that, that people on the Republican side are saying is we should try to pay for some of this instead of just adding it to the, to the federal debt. And um, I think that's where you're going to see internal debates inside the Republican but, Party. But don't you have to know the answer to the question of whether you're going to be spending, say, $300 billion uh, over 10 years? In, it's well, I know, but Mara, if, you, if you've already spent 61, correct, they're but I mean, spend if, another if you're going to be spending $300 billion over 10 years, that sounds rather manageable. Mm -hmm. And and doesn't require heroic spending cuts or yeah. tax increases. But if you're going to be spending three hundred billion dollars over two or three years, that's another matter. Agree? Yeah. But if you don't know that, you at least know what you're appropriating in these emergency supplementals. You already did sixty-one. The next one that comes up, maybe somebody's going to stand up and say, "Okay, let's pay for it by cutting X or Y." Charles. Well, there are ways to cut spending to pay for some of this. Um, one of them would be to cancel the 6,371 earmarks in the uh, transportation yeah, bill, hold your breath. which is the pet spending of <laughs> Stop for just a second. What is the state of play on the transportation bill? Is that signed into law? Yes, or is yeah, that... It's a done deal. Would have so they'd have to go back and undo it with legislation. New law, you have yes. to undo it. It's not going to happen, but it's worth saying anyway. Uh, that's $24 billion. That's really lunch money, but still it's a large lunch. Um, secondly, uh, McCain has talked about, some people have spoken about postponing the prescription the drug the benefit in the Medicare that's going to kick in. McCain is right in saying it ought to be canceled altogether. That's $800 a billion in need amount. And the last item, which I would add, which you won't like, and I'll get a lot of email on this, is to raise the gasoline tax. As, as Katrina passes and, and Rita, and as the world the price declines as it will, I think we ought to be taxing the price of gasoline as it, it goes below $3. Spend some of it on Katrina in the years that's required, but in the future, recycle it into the economy through cuts in taxes on income or social security. There's a three-point plan. It's a visionary. Uh, it's bold. It hasn't got a chance of being enacted. <laughs> you know, let me say something about the Medicare prescription drug plan, which I think is, is one of the most interesting proposals. Come from some Republicans in the House who didn't like it to begin with. A lot of Republicans didn't. This is a plan that is tremendously expensive, biggest expansion of an entitlement in 40 years, has gotten the Republicans almost nothing politically, and it might be perfectly fitting no, no, on a lot of levels to cancel. deal with that? That thing has not proved very popular. Well, it's kicking in in 2006. It hasn't proved popular. Seniors are confused about it. The idea of it was that it was going to be this incredibly popular thing, right. kind of putting dessert before spinach, and then you could make these entitlement reforms, yeah. and it hasn't worked out that well, way. Well, it's not popular because it hasn't happened yet. As well, soon as people can get it, and, 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 and the you're proposal kill it now in the crib. No, the proposal that is to uh, that I've heard, seen is to delay its implementation right. for two years to save uh, about uh, sixty yeah. billion dollars, which right. is amount we've already spent on Katrina. So. No, amount we've already appropriated. Appropriate. We don't know, we don't know how much. And, and, and we'll wait and see how long yeah, it takes yeah. to spend. That. Yeah, right. we, we have no There's idea. one other proposal that will, uh, that is uh, an across the board cut uh, on uh, and uh, on all programs, and I bet that not military, will, not non-military programs, but that could save a lot of money, and I bet that may work. All right. When we come back with our panel, Democrats criticize President Bush on hurricane recovery. We'll take up that subject next. There's some new criticism. Smart Balance Buttery Spread cooks, spreads, and tastes like real butter without the cholesterol and high saturated fat. And Smart Balance just received another Best Taste Award. So for real butter taste and the right balance, enjoy Smart Balance. For years, E-Trade stood outside, throwing stones at the financial establishment. Now that we've matured and offer everything from trading to banking, we're doing it from inside. Be extraordinary at E-Trade.com. Vanilla first left Mexico in the early 1500s on ships headed for Spain. However, it wasn't until 1519 that the Spaniards learned vanilla was more than just a perfume. 
Mexico continues their vanilla. If the history of vanilla doesn't put you to sleep, maybe this will. New Tylenol PM and soothing vanilla liquid relieves pain, isn't habit forming, and leaves you refreshed in the morning. Here's an important message from Liberty Medical and actress Delta Burke, who's been living with diabetes since 1997. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, you have to think about you. I'm talking to you men, too. Make it easier by calling Liberty Medical. They deliver your testing supplies right to your door with no charge for shipping. And Medicare may cover them, even if you don't use insulin. Liberty fills out all your claim forms. There's nothing to pay up front, either. They'll even contact you when it's time to reorder. And forget about going to the drugstore. Your diabetes testing supplies will come to you. Look, we all come across a few bumps in the road. Just pull over once in a while and take care of yourself. And make it easier by calling Liberty. If you're on Medicare, call Liberty at 1-800-864-5656 for free information about getting your diabetes testing supplies delivered to your home. Call 1-800-864-5656. What is Medicare's new prescription drug coverage all about, and how will it affect me? What if we already have drug coverage? Can we still save with Medicare Part D? How do I qualify for Medicare Part D? Everyone has questions about Medicare's new prescription drug coverage, Medicare Part D, and everyone can get the answers they need through Medicare RX InfoSource, a free educational service developed by United Healthcare. There's no obligation to receive these free educational materials. Write down the number on your screen to call us, and we'll send you the information you need. Call the number on your screen now for your free show me guide and educational materials through Medicare RX InfoSource. It's free. And it's for anyone with questions about Medicare's new prescription drug coverage. Call now. Call 1-800-542-1700. That's 1-800-542-1700. So call 1-800-542-1700. This is, in effect, the Katrina administration. What Brownie is to Katrina, Paul Bremer is to the approach in Iraq. What Brownie is to Katrina, George Bush is to mission accomplished, common sense, and wanted dead or alive. This president, who never met an earmark he wouldn't approve or a millionaire tax cut he wouldn't promote, decided to slash wages for the least of us, for the most vulnerable. Well, there you get it. A uh, couple of presidential contenders have a, looks like they might have a couple of new speeches. John Kerry gave his a workout last night up at Brown and tried it out again today, and it's got some catchy uh, language in it. But it is not out of phase with what a lot of other Democrats are saying about um, President uh, Bush on this. What about these political attacks? I wonder, given the fact that the president's poll ratings have clearly, which were down anyway, have clearly dropped since Katrina, mm -hmm. whether this is, is this a, uh, an easy target or is this politically risky, what? Well, I think that the Democrats had lacked uh, a response, a political response, to almost anything that the president been, has been doing. And finally, they have found an issue where they think they can go after him, which is his response to Katrina, that it, his administration's response to Katrina. And I think it, it, it may resonate because uh, it clearly was a fumbled response. The problem with moving in this direction is I think the Democrats will run into uh, a problem when uh, they will not oppose paying for the reconstruction of Katrina, and their solution about how to pay for that construction uh, would be uh, to raise taxes which puts them on the wrong side of the public, in my view, and may return the issue to the president's favor. So uh, it is a good thing for the Democrats. They needed some sort of political response, which they hadn't had. But unless they're very careful, they're about to run uh, to paint themselves into a corner. Well, unless, unless Republicans, some Republicans, take the first step in uh, suggesting how to pay for this, mm -hmm. there is not making the tax cuts permanent. Now, I'm sure some Republicans will say that's the same thing as a tax increase. Right. There's also the war in Iraq. Poll after poll shows that when you give people the option of where do you think we should get the money to pay for Katrina reconstruction and relief, uh, big numbers say we should but take money Democrats away from prepared, Iraq. I don't know if Democrats are, 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 are prepared to propose that. I suspect that, as in many other things, they're going to wait to see what the Republicans do to get themselves out of this uh, deficit problem. 
If you watch Kerry and Edwards, the attack is on two fronts. The first is competence, and the second is compassion. They say this ripped away the face of America, and we saw the poor, and how abandoned they are by administration that favors the rich. If the Democrats who want to have a debate over the, the causes of poverty, and uh, Kerry accused the president of wanting to attack the problem with a right-wing ideological agenda, uh, I think it's a good debate for the Republicans, because if you look at the poor who are in the Superdome in Louisiana, that was a result of a left-wing ideological experiment of 40 years in the great society, trillions, untold the trillions spent, which produced that catastrophe, social ca uh, catastrophe, and the president's of solutions, not to make work jobs as Edwards has recommended, but training in jobs, having a home instead of uh, being stuck in those uh, housing projects, having a real home on federal land, homesteading, is an excellent uh, solution. And, and is the third element is entrepreneurship, which as we saw with all the other immigrants in the country, is the way out of the poverty. Well, if they want to have a debate on poverty, the, the Democrats are going to lose. I, I'm not sure the Democrats are going to lose. Uh, I, I, I think seared, seared into the public consciousness are those faces of poor people who the, uh, the federal government, all governments could have helped but did not, and that will have long-standing, serious political implications. That's it for the panel, but stay tuned because it seems the UN has picked a fight with the wrong people. Tonight, will you be able to catch a great night's sleep? Or will your restless mind keep chasing sleep away? I've got to remember that appointment tomorrow. Did I send the car payment? Introducing Lunesta, a sleep aid that can give you and your restless mind the sleep you need. Lunesta helps most people sleep all through the night and works quickly, so take it right before bed. Lunesta is non-narcotic and approved for long-term use. Of course, do not use sleep medicines for extended periods without first talking to your doctor. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active. Until you know how you'll react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Avoid taking Lunesta with alcohol. All sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. Ready to catch a great night's sleep? Just climb into bed and leave the rest to Lunesta. Does a promise come with an expiration date? Is it good for a month, a year, or decades from now? At New York Life, we make promises that have no expiration date. Promises that are built on the timeless values of financial strength, integrity, and humanity. Promises that we live by. So no matter how the world changes around you, New York Life is the company you keep. These heavily crusted humidifier filters make it easy to see that CLR cleans faster than lime away. Clearly faster. CLR rages through caked on calcium, lime, and rust instantly with a storm of cleaning action and keeps cleaning. That means you won't have to. CLR, number one for a reason. It works. And it's guaranteed or your money back. CLR, clean faster, clearly faster. CLR has earned the good housekeeping seal and is available at fine retailers. so much more to see. Shouldn't you be watching it on the Aquas Liquid Crystal Television? From Sharp. The Oracle Grid, a group of low-cost servers connected by Oracle software. Now, if a server fails, the grid just keeps running. The Oracle Grid runs faster, costs less, and never breaks. Tonight, it's a factor investigation. With oil prices at all-time highs, where is all that money really going? Who's profiting from it? And are you getting hosed? We follow the money trail for answers on the next edition of the O'Reilly Factor. Tracking Rita as another monster storm strengthens, battering the Keys. The Gulf Coast braces for the worst. Could this storm hit with the power and devastation of Katrina? For live reports and breaking news, stay with the Fox News Channel. For the family tonight, there's a guy on CBS late at night who says he's a Scotsman. And if anybody thought he was just faking his accent, well, he's pretty well proved that he's the real thing. Scotland uh, tops the world's list of most violent countries. A United Nations report, it says, has labelled Scotland the most violent country in the developed world. Three times more likely to be assaulted in Scotland as you are in America. 
a violent place, Scotland. It says the attacks have been fueled by the booze and blades culture in Scotland. <laughs> this is the UN saying this about Scotland. And I, frankly, Kobe Annan and the UN. <laughs> you want a piece of me, pal? You want a piece of me, UN? And that's special report for this time. Please tune in next time. And in the meantime, more news is on the way. Fair, balanced, and unafraid.